Yes. And so this is the first week in the month of April, and we give God thanks. Last month was a blessing as we looked at how to manage, amen, crises and difficulties in our life as believers, especially within the body of Christ, how to help each other as we travel this road, this faith walk, and we know it is not an easy one. And so we give God thanks for this month, and we trust and pray that the Lord himself will speak through his servant, amen, with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, so that we will be edified and encouraged and empowered and go and share as the word of God said, study to show yourself approved. So we trust that God will take control of this month and all the Wednesdays as we join to study his word. Bow your heads with me and let us invite his present to lead and to take control because we know he is here with us. Our oh God and our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, we give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. Father, there is none like unto you. Only you, Father, could have raised the Son this morning. And in some part of the world it is going down, and some part of the world it is still up. Only you, Father, could have created such an awesome job. We give you thanks for life. We give you thanks for strength. We give you thanks for grace and mercy. We thank you for Jesus Christ. Through him, we have eternal life. Through him, we have hope. Through him, we have joy. Through him we have peace. Through him we have healing. Through him we have contentment. Through him we can rejoice. Father, we thank you this evening. We praise you, we honor you, we worship you. Father, we thank you for this privilege and the access to your throne. We thank you for this privilege, Lord, as we gather on this platform this evening. Oh God, we ask for your leading and your direction. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will cancel all our plans and our objective and that we will fall in line with your will. Oh God, we pray right now on this platform that your will be done in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. We pray, Father, for our presenter and teacher, Pastor Ash and family. We pray, mighty God, for those who will be reading, those who will be asking questions and making comments. I pray that all will be done in the spirit of humility and love and respect, O oh Lord, as we all portray that the Christ, the hope of glory, lives within us. And God, you are not a God of confusion. Direct, we pray, Father. Lead, we pray. I trust, O oh Lord, that we will leave here better than we came in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, that the weak will be strong, the discouraged will be encouraged, the unsaved will be saved, and the backslider will return. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Have your own way tonight among us, we ask, as we commit this Bible study in your hand. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Praise God. Brothers and sisters, at this time, I'm going to invite Sister Faye, and she will be introducing our teacher and presenter for the month of April. God bless her as she come. Yes, good night, everyone, or well, good evening. Um, today, I'll be introducing the speaker for the month of April. It is a joyous privilege to introduce our presenter for the month of April. He is a devout servant of God who was born in Egypt but grew up primarily in Oklahoma, USA. 
In previous presentations, he shared the powerful testimony of how God took him, an Egyptian, out of Egypt, and also and also took the Egyptian out of him. He also shared the miracle of how God saved his life from the brink of death, even though his large intestine had to be completely removed. He will tell you that his friends now call him the gutless wonder. He served as an elder and pastor in Oklahoma for 19 years before answering God's call to make the move to Canada a few years ago when God sent him and revealed his plan for his life. He now resides in the province of Manitoba with his Caribbean American wife, Hedy, and three of their five young adult children. Currently, he serves on a volunteer basis as the director of Heart of Truth Mission, a ministry of it. He is also the pastor of evangelism and outreach in Monitobia and globally. Ministering wherever the Lord, Jesus continues to open doors in this role. He serves recovering the homeless and poor, and of course, God's people, young and old, who are in need of spiritual care, development, and counseling. He is very passionate about serving the Lord and serving those whom he sent. Once again, we welcome Pastor Ash Kale and his wonderful wife, Sister Heidi. That's that. Greetings, beloved, in Jesus' blessed name. So good to see everyone. Greetings, Pastor Quarry, Mrs. Okay. Sandra, okay. rest of the brothers and sisters in Christ, friends. We bless God that we are able to come together one more time. I've been missing those sessions. So I am thank God that we're able to come together by the grace of God. Who would ever thought that this was going to be means by which God is going to connect many of his people. Who would ever thought that we would be online, on wires, where we are able to connect from one place to the other? I thank God for his grace. I'd like to pray also and join you as we start this session and bless God again. Father, we bless you. We thank you for your grace, your love, your mercy. Father, we thank you for your awesome word of truth that gives life, O oh Father, that destroys the lies of the devil and all false teachings and doctrines, O oh Father, of men. O oh Father, I pray that you speak tonight by your spirit and no other spirit will reject every foul and evil spirit from our midst, that it would have no power, no authority amongst us in Jesus' name, and that your spirit, O oh Father, is welcomed here this day. Father, speak to us. Help us to have ears to hear what your spirit have to say. And only in Jesus' holy and precious name do we pray. Amen. Tonight Amen. is a big subject. Tonight is a big subject that many have had a challenge of receiving. For some of you, it may be basic. It may be just a refresher. For others, it may be new and there will be times of questions and answers and so forth that we will go through as the Lord permits and, and time also permits. There's, I have so many passages of scripture. I think I overwhelmed Sister Sandra, but I know that she's hang, she's going to hang in there with me as we shuffle through the different passages and see what God has to say tonight. A real quick update also about our Heart of Truth mission we are relocating from the camp that we have been staying in. So we are about to move. Guess when? By the end of this month. So guess what I have before me? We have to move. But here's the caveat. We don't know where we're going yet. We have no place. I just told my, my family, have your staff in your hand, shoes on your feet, 
and be ready to depart to wherever God wills by his grace and by faith we move forward. We are pilgrims. We take the we we set up tent and then we take our tent down and then we set up tent to wherever he wants us to serve. I see Pastor Query's faith is going, oh my goodness, this is big. Yes. So we're going to be juggling a lot of things at the same time. So pray for us that God opens the door mightily in the name of Jesus. And uh, so let's go ahead and get started. My subject is the extended identity or Jesus's extended identity. So let us first go through Jesus being the Son of God. For some of you, you may know that already. For some of you that don't know that and haven't learned about that, let's just make sure that you're grounded in that, okay? The first passage of Scripture that I want to open up with is Matthew 8, verse 28 and 29. And I'm going to read this passage to you. You'll think it's an odd passage, but it's very powerful in itself. The Bible says, and when he was come to the other side into the country of the Gergesenes, there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God, are thou come hither to torment us before the time? Let me ask you a quick question. What do you see in this passage real quick? Who would like to shoot about Jesus? What is happening here? What do you see? Good evening. I I see where the devil has um he has um he I, I forgot my train of thought. The devil had had um well I would say uh um no no that it was Jesus. That's not what I want to say. But um the devil knew Jesus personally, and that's why he said. Um, Jesus, you don't come to to torment me before my time because he knows that he knows that his time is short. That's my thought. That's not what thank I want to say. Yes, thank you. That's right. How isn't this ironic to you that here's the demons? They recognize not only Jesus, but also who Jesus is. Not only did they recognize Jesus, but who he is. He is the the what? The son of God. The devils know about Jesus, but much of humanity don't recognize him. Some wrong. Some wrong. Okay, next passage. Go to Matthew 16, verse 16. Again, this is just maybe basic. Right? Basic homework. But I encourage you to take notes. This is a rich subject. Take as much notes as you can. Matthew 16. Let me set context for you first. We'll start with verse 13. The Bible says, When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and other Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? This is after the, the demon just declared who he is. Now he's asking his disciples, who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, what did Peter just say? What what more did Peter say that we didn't pick up in the demons when, when, what, when they spoke? That he's the Christ, the Son of God. 
that he is the Christ. Christ. Very good. Now we see that Jesus is the son of God earlier. We, it's confirmed by the apostles that he is the son of God, but he is the Christ. Now, what does Christ mean? The chosen one, the savior. The, savior. the, the, savior. Anointed, the anointed one. The anointed one. That's right. He is the anointed one. The word Christ being the anointed one, the savior. And we know that that is referencing who the Messiah is, right? It is reflecting in the Old Testament that this is the Messiah. So when Peter said, you are Jesus, the Christ, the son of the living God, he is referencing that he is the anointed of God that was prophesied about long time ago. And the Bible says, and Jesus said to him, blessed are thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. So the identity, now listen carefully here. The identity of Jesus Christ is only revealed by the Father. That's why many don't get it. That's why many do not understand who Jesus is. They need revelation from the Father. You follow me? Peter got revelation from the Father out of all the disciples that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And I say also to thee that you are Peter. So Peter identified who Jesus is. Now Jesus is identifying who Peter is. And then he says, and upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Upon what rock? Upon the identity and the truth, the solid rock truth that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. You understand? Right? Very clear. Very, very crisp and clear. All right. So we have the demons identifying who Christ is. The, the leader amongst the apostles is identifying who Christ is. Now go to Matthew 27, 54. If I can have a reader, please. Matthew 27, 54. Yes. Now when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly saying, truly, this was the son of God. Woo! Hallelujah. This is when, this is when the crucifixion was taking place, right? Now tell me who is identifying Jesus now? Who is recognizing Christ? The centurions. The centurion. Look at that. So what is the Lord showing us? That Jesus was not to be hidden to just a select few of people. Just to the Jews. Isn't that awesome? Look at how God is unpacking who Jesus is. He wanted the whole realm of the demons to know who Jesus is. He wanted the apostles, uh, that his followers, to know who Jesus is. And now he wanted the Gentiles, the unconverted, you understand, to know who Jesus is. From beginning to end. There's a passage of scripture that if you remember 2 Corinthians 13, 1, that says what? In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be what? Be established. You understand? Nine. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. And the exercise that I'm taking you through is to solidify the truth of who Jesus is as best as we know today. Okay? And so we heard the witnesses of the demons. We heard the witnesses of Peter. Now we are hearing the witness of the centurion. 
the unconverted. Now let's look at Mark 1.1. 1, 1. Ron, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Right in the opening, we have Mark, right? Mind you, Mark was not one of the apostles. Did you notice that? So Mark is writing as one of the followers of Jesus, and he is identifying that Jesus is, right off the bat, the Son of God for us. All right? So we see in Matthew that he is the Son of God, the Christ, the Messiah. Mark now, as the second witness as well, as one of the Gospels, is also confirming to us who the, what is the identity of Jesus thus far. All right? Now go to Luke chapter 1. Luke 1, 32 and 31. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. 35. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Woo! Hallelujah! Who is speaking? Who is speaking? Very important. The angel. The angel. So, not only demons, not only apostle, not only centurion, not only just a disciple who was not one of the apostles in Mark, but now in Luke, even the angel of God is declaring to us that Jesus is the Son of God. In heaven, on earth, God is one to make it clear who Jesus is. Let's continue. Luke 4.41. Luke 4, 41. And the devils also came out of many, crying out and saying, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. And he rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. So the devils here, now in the gospel of Luke, is also declaring that he is the Son of God. And Jesus himself is identifying himself, even though still secretly, that he is the Christ by telling them to shut up and don't speak on my name. Do not speak of my identity. All right? Any questions thus far? Again, when I'm asking you about questions any, based on what we just read, any questions that any of you have thus far? And whoever is um, can monitor for me, if you can just monitor for me, if there's anybody that has questions or comments, that would be great. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. If there's none, now I want to take you to John 1. And I, am, I will be reading this passage here. John the Baptist is ministering and baptizing people left and right. And then he saw Christ. And look at John speaking about Jesus. John 1, 29. The next day, John sees Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of of the world. Talk to me. What do you see? This is so crucial. What do you see? The lamb that would be sacrificed for our sins. 
That's right. Now, we have not heard that this is the Lamb of God until John comes into the picture. John is a prophet. So now the prophet of God has identified who Jesus is. This is so important because Jesus references not only his identity through the Psalms, not only his identity through Moses, but also his identity through the prophets. John, as one of the super prophets, if you may, has come on the scene and is now declaring the identity and the purpose of Jesus. Isn't this wonderful? See, long time ago, when Abraham was going up the mountain with Isaac, they had the wood and the fire, but then Isaac asked a question. We have this wood and we have the fire, but where is the sacrifice or the lamb that is to be offered? And Abraham said what? The Lord will provide. The Lord, God will provide himself a lamb. And years forward, John the Baptist came on the scene and he says, behold, the lamb. The question of Isaac is now answered by John the Revelator. I mean, I mean John the Baptist. John yes. revealing, you understand, the identity of Jesus as the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. When you go to John 1, 34, jump down, and the Bible says, and I saw and bear record that this is the Son of of God. So John didn't only identify Jesus as the Lamb of God, he also declared him as the Son of God. And then when you go all the way down to verse 51, of, I'm sorry, not yet. John 1, 49, when Jesus was picking his disciples, he came to one that was called Nathanael, verse 49. Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the what? The son of God, thou art the king of Israel. We have a new peace that is now brought into the picture for us. He is declaring, again, one of his disciples, one of his followers now, is identifying Jesus as the Son of God and the King of Israel. Remember this. Make clear notes in your notebooks. This is crucial, and you'll see why I'm saying that. And then when you, and Jesus said to him, because I said to you, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than beasts. And he said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, hereafter you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Jesus unpacking who he is. He is also identified as the Son of Man, came in human flesh from Adam. Are you following what I'm saying thus far? Wonderful, wonderful. Now go to John chapter 3. Yes, John chapter 3, verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. He has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Jesus is identifying himself. He is the only begotten of God, the only begotten Son of God. So there's no sons in plurality. There's only one begotten Son of God. Jesus is declaring that. And he's saying, we must believe on the name of that Son. You understand so far? Good. Let us go on to the next passage. John 3, 36, 35 first. The father loves the son 
and has given all things into his hand. The father loves the son and he's given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the son has everlasting life. And he that believeth not the son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. You ever read this passage? You see, we, we teach many times John 3, 16. But John 3, 35 and 36 opens up to us. It is so imperative that you I, recognize who Jesus is, that you identify him as the son of God, and that you believe on this son in order to have everlasting life. Otherwise, the Bible says what? If you don't believe on this son, then you will not see life, but God's wrath abides on that individual. We're in trouble. If the world is in trouble and they don't realize that. So when we minister, the whole purpose of tonight is to equip you. I want to equip you with tools about who Jesus is. And you're going to understand why I'm saying I'm focusing on this subject. Because it is the foundation of our belief as Christians. But it is also the foundation of mission work when you go reach out for souls. To identify. You know why? Because when you run into many other beliefs out there and many other religions out there, whether it's Jehovah Witness, Mormonism, Catholicism, whatever it may be, you need a good grasp on who Jesus is in order for them that they be saved. And if you don't have a solid grasp on where to share and expound these truths, then all your discussion comes to nothing. You follow me? So that's why it's imperative that I'm walking through with you on this. That you recognize these truths. All right? And then the last passage under the Son of God is this. John 20, verse 31. John 20, verse 31. But these are written. John, after he showed the, the miracles and all the teachings of Jesus and, and all the powerful manifestations of Christ through the land, John then says this final word, but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the, number one, the Christ. We have to know that, th that he is the son of God. You understand? He is the Christ and he is the son of God. Two different things. But one together. They are united together. And that believing you might have life through his name. Isn't this awesome? So if any time you run into individuals or you yourselves are doubting about who Jesus is and how you can walk this Christian life, go read John. Go read and study the book of John. Its objective was to identify who Christ is as the Messiah, the anointed one, the son of the living God, so that you and I would believe and be saved. Any questions thus far? Let me open it up with questions and comments about what we just covered so far. I know we went so fast through it, but I wanted, because I have so many other things to bring to you. So, um, can I speak? Sure. I don't know who's speaking. Uh, Missionary Gail from Toronto. Okay. Okay. So, we all must recognize, it's imperative that we recognize that Jesus Christ is Lord. And it's not just Jesus Christ is Lord, but he is the son of the living God. So, all that you're saying here is recognize recognition 
recognize that 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 Jesus is Lord, and and even the devil recognize, um, and um, the centurion recognized, even though he was not um a, a Jew, um, he recognized that um Jesus is the Christ. So this is what we as as the saints of God must come to that um recognition that Jesus Christ is Lord in all things. That's my thought. Thank you, missionary. Appreciate that. That's right. That's right. And they are passages that you can use in the mission field to show people who Christ is. That everything on earth in heaven was declaring and identifying that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. And they are without excuse. All right. If I don't have anybody else, then I'm going to go to the next section. The next section is the extended identity of Jesus. We're going to get deeper. All right. First, let's go to Matthew 1, 21 to 23. Matthew 1, 21 to 23 reads, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. And let's couple that with Isaiah 7, 14. So keep your finger in Matthew and then flip through to Isaiah 7, verse 14. Isaiah 7, 14 reads, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. All right, let's open it up. What do we see now that is new about Jesus? Is that a question? It is a question. Okay, so so he was even identified in Matthew 1, 21, 23. He was identified as um, Jesus, and Mary shall bear a son, and his name shall be called Jesus. And he identified again in Isaiah 7, 14. That's another identity of Jesus Christ coming to this earth as um, the son of God and still in human form. Good, good. What else? Thank you. Thank you for sharing. What else? I just wanted to add, this is Trisha from Toronto. Um, I just wanted to add as well, from the beginning of time, God always wanted relationship with mankind. So Jesus is now being revealed as Emmanuel, God with us. Beautiful. This is so, so crucial. That's why I wanted to do this study. It's so enriching. It's not supposed to be heady. It's not supposed to be intellectual. It's supposed to be hearty. It's supposed to reveal to us how much God cares and loves people. That God cares so much. He had to come down and get close. And he came in human flesh, Emmanuel. See, he, they, they, God didn't want us to know just Jesus by name, but by purpose and objective and relationship. He came down as God with us in human flesh. God got close. Can you wrap your mind around that? God coming down in human flesh 
and wants to get close to us. And not only close, but I better not jump ahead. God, Emmanuel. So Isaiah the prophet prophesied back then. And now years later, the angel comes and then brings two things together. Jesus' name with Emmanuel. Follow this very closely. The extension of Christ. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 9, again. this is another passage in Isaiah. We're going to spend some time back and forth in Isaiah through this whole night. Isaiah 9. Verse 6 and 7. And it reads, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it. To establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Talk to me. What do you now see about Jesus? Again from the same prophet that declared his birth. What is he saying here? Anything new? I think he's now declaring the qualifications of Jesus. What he's capable to do for mankind. Qualifications? Okay, yeah. thank you. What else? Anyone? All right. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I see like in Isaiah, he's declaring the authority of Jesus. Like when he says the government will be on his shoulders, the authority that he has. Um, yeah. And who's <laughs> and, like, speaking? This is Trisha from Toronto. Wonderful. Trisha from Toronto. Look at this. Not only what he's going to do, but what he is authorized. He is in authority position, identified with authority. He's going to what? He's going to have a government. The increase of his government in peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David. Wait a second. Upon the throne of David. What does that mean? Is it just function? Or rule. He's gonna rule. He's gonna rule. Rule. Right? What do you put on a throne? Who sits on thrones? Thank King. you. King. King. Right? See it scripted in there? But it wasn't just king. We keep on missing what was said in verse 6. So you, he's called wonderful, counselor. What else? The mighty father. The mighty what? God. The mighty God, Jesus, the mighty yeah. God. Yeah. I, I want you to highlight this verse. And here's why I'm, I want, I'm just giving you a clue here, okay? When... You are dealing, for example, with Jehovah Witnesses. And I had to deal with many of them in my ministry. 
This is one of the scriptures in their own Bible that they missed. Because when they come to identify Jesus, they think they declare him as a little God, G-O-D, small letter in the New Testament. They say he's a little <laughs> G-O-D. I took their book and I said, look at your passage in your book in Isaiah 9, verse 6, and tell me what it says. And it read, the mighty, capital M, God, capital G, O D, capital capital tell me why does your book contradict itself maybe god is trying to tell you to throw out the false doctrines and teachings that you have and get to know the mighty jesus the mighty god i want you to i highlight and note this in your notations when you're dealing with them or any others i pray that you yourself know who jesus is as we unpack him tonight Mighty God. What about the next one? Everlasting Father. What does everlasting Father mean? It means forever. Has no end. No yeah. end. No beginning and no end. Right. No beginning and no end. Jesus identified as everlasting Father. No beginning and no end. And he's called Father. Do we really know who Jesus is? The Prince of Peace. Blessed be his name. Hallelujah. Let's go on to the next passage. Micah 5.2. Okay. And it reads, But thou, Beth Bethlehem, Ephratha, thou, oh, no, sorry, tough, mm -hmm. thou though be little, though thou be little among thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from the old, from of old, from everlasting. What does this say? Micah the prophet, out of you, Bethlehem Ephrata, what's going to happen? There's going to come a who? Ruler in Israel. And his going forth is from where? From old time. Micah's saying this in the Old Testament. From everlasting, Jesus from everlasting. You see, that's why there, there's these teachings that says, well, Jesus never existed in the beginning. Jesus was never be in, you know, everlasting from the beginning, right? And we're going to reveal how was he everlasting in the beginning? In what form was he in? But here Micah declares it. Not so? Okay. Any questions so far? Any thoughts so far? Because we're going to rev up here. Uh, I have a question. Okay. Who am I speaking with? It's Brother Jeffrey. Go ahead, Brother Jeffrey. Um, when in Micah 5.2, um, when it says that uh, the ruler who's going is from uh, who has been from old, from everlasting. Um, is it saying like that he is like there's something before him, or is it just that he was something that was from old? What I understand it mean is that he was from old. He has been from all of all time. That he was there. How do we know? Because John the Baptist also is going to identify him that he was what? Before me. So I believe that he's unpacking to us where Jesus was, that he was actually from old, from everlasting. So, so would that mean that 
like he was created, that there's an origin to him. So he's not like created, a, not created because origin. it says everlasting. Yeah, but it says from no, yes, yeah, so, yeah, it does say everlasting, but it, it says that it's from old. Right, and that's why I'm saying to you is when you bring the old from everlasting explains the old. It says, have been from of old from everlasting. So not that he was created, that he had a, uh, a specific time of, you know, um, made or something to that effect. That's how I understood it. Okay, it's, it's I was just asking because to me, it sounds like there's a beginning. Like when it says from old, that means that something was there was an origin to it. It, it it may sound like that but that's not what it's saying and let's as we continue the passages of scripture forward we'll see what the lord continues to reveal sounds okay. good I, thank you for your question may i yes Ash, yes um it, it means that jesus here is not an ordinary person even though the bible speak of mary shall bring forth a child if we look back on what the prophet said, Emmanuel, so he's not just an ordinary person who just come, you know, in existence by birth. He is beyond that. He's beyond that. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Query. That's correct. That's correct. And you, we're going to see the truth about that unpacked as we go forward. Who's next? Can I say something? Yes. Yeah. Can I say something, Pastor Ash? Sure. Who Hello. am I speaking? Two hands. There's two hands, yeah. Pastor Ash. Okay, thank you. Yes, and um, just to, to tap it off, that he was in from from before the world. He was in the Father's bosom. And that's where he lived from and come to earth in the form of man. So he was from everlasting to everlasting in the Father's bosom, if that makes sense. Yes, yes. And I don't, again, I don't want to run ahead, but you are absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Thank you. Yes, I have Brown, have their hand up. Yes, and then Pastor Lane. Okay. Again, so this is Trisha, Sister Trisha. Thank you for taking my question. So um, just referring back to Isaiah 9, um, when you were saying that, you know, you witnessed to Jehovah Witnesses and... Um, the title when it says that he'll be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, capital G. So it's kind of confusing to me a little bit, to be honest, because a lot of times when Jesus would talk to his disciples, he would always refer back that, like to the father, he would refer like, I am not God. So it's kind of confusing to me a little bit because we know Jesus is not God, but he is God. <laughs> I hope I'm being clear. You know, you, you you are making it. You're very clear. I understand you completely. You can we're gonna unpack this so richly, and that I'm hoping that it would clarify things. Okay. okay? Thank you. You will see that. Okay. Uh, now, do I? Is it Lang? Yes. Okay. In in John seventeen. I think it will connect with what the sister was saying a while ago. I can't understand you. You're not coming clear. There's some background noise. It's not my background, Pastor. I don't know whose mic is open. Are you hearing me now? A lot better, yes. Okay. Yeah, in John 17, when Jesus was praying, that was the Gethsemane night. He actually prayed to the Father that he had finished the work that he gave him to do. And he said, now glorify me with the glory I had with you before the world began. So I, I don't know if you had that passage, but I said that settles the argument that Jesus was not part of this creation. Jesus predated the creation. Right. And, and so it corroborates with what you've been saying. That is from, and John says it well in John 1. That in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So right. it is, we, we have we have more than enough evidence to go with. But but I said I I think you need to reemphasize the point a little more. 
what Jesus said. I think in Matthew 11, between 27 and 28, he says, no one knows the son except the father. So all the people you quoted testifying of Jesus, they did not come up with that revelation by themselves. It had to be the spirit of God that gave them that revelation. And Jesus said that to Peter, don't boast about it. Don't think that is because you're wiser than the rest. <laughs> you could not know who I was except the father revealed that to you. In fact, John the Baptist, John the Baptist also said that. I would not have known him except the one who sent me to baptize, gave me the sign. So, so, so we should be very sympathetic to people who do not know who Jesus is because Jesus is not revealed by human wisdom or any extra knowledge that we have. It has to come from the Father by the Spirit directly or through the Word. So, so I said, we, we don't have to be confused. Jesus came in flesh, yes, but we, we have a lot of scriptures that told us that he became that for us, but that was not who he was. That's and, I, and you, Pastor Ash, you, you could decide, you could become, you, Pastor Ash, could decide to become a street cleaner. But it does not take away from you being Pastor Ash. You, you're just playing a role because there's a work to be done. So we should not be confused with Jesus. Thanks. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you very much for sharing that. Yes, there's so many scriptures that I have that's going to unpack all of these things that we are discussing. Okay? So yes, he was from the beginning. And here, John starts to unpack it for us. Let's go to John chapter 1. Okay? And we will read. Okay? I'm going to read this passage. Beginning was verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. End of story. No. God wants to unpack this so we can fully grasp it. So first and foremost, in the beginning was the Word. This Word means Logos. Okay? So for some of you that are Hebrew experts or Greek experts, if you want to note this, feel free to do so. Somebody has a mic on. So here we have the word. The Bible says, in the beginning was the Logos, the word. And the word was what? With God. You understand? So it, the word was with God and the word was God. Now what? Wrap our minds around that. So the Lord is showing to us that the Logos was with God and was God. Okay? Where? In the beginning. In the beginning, in Genesis, we will see that that is exactly what the Lord is saying here by His Spirit. That this Jesus was identified as the Logos in the Old Testament, in the beginning of time. He was with God in the beginning. And he was God in the beginning. So this is what John is bringing us to. Connecting us to, in the beginning, what God created the heaven and the earth. And when you look at that passage in Genesis, of which we're going to read here in just a second you will see that God and the Logos was together and the Logos was God. Do you understand so far? Not yet. But let's see what happens. So John 1, continuing from there, the same was in the beginning with God. He wants you to know this, that this word, the Logos, was with God, no question, but was also God, no question. All things, now listen carefully, all things were made by him, the Logos, all things. And without him was not anything made that was made. Follow me. So he, 
is the one that made all things. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. That's why when God spoke, then that was the Logos, the word. And the word then by the spirit functioned and brought life into existence. So we have the word is the one that is creating and making things happen. And the light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, which is John, but was not set, was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was, listen carefully, to answer the question that was previous, verse 10, he was in the world. Past tense. He was in the world, and the world was what? Made by him. And the world knew him not. He was hidden. God hid him from the beginning. The world didn't recognize him. But it was he that was in the world, and the world was made by him. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. And we see that. We see that uh, a symbolic expression about Joseph. When Joseph was taken into slavery into Egypt, his brethren did not recognize Joseph. And that was a picture of God. Christ was not recognized when he came to his own. They didn't recognize him. And the Bible says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word, listen carefully, the word was made flesh. The word, the logos, was made flesh and dwelt among us. That's when Jesus came on the scene then. So the Logos became a human being and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory of who? As of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And when you jump down, let's, we'll continue to read this whole thing. John bear witness of him. Brian saying, this was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was what? Before me. He was before me. John is a prophet. God revealed to John by the Spirit that he was before him. How can Jesus be before him? Because he was the Logos. He was the Word of God. So he was before John. And the Bible says what? And of his fullness have all we received and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. No man, listen carefully, no man has seen God at any time. Uh-oh. We're going to get deeper. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. Follow me so far. The Logos was with God. The Logos was God. The Logos created, made everything. And the Logos became flesh, became a human being. And dwelt among us. Who is Jesus? But we're not going to stop there. Go to Genesis 1. Let's connect the beginning 
to what John is saying, Genesis 1. Genesis 1, 1 to 3. I'm coming. Genesis 1, 1 to 3 reads. Okay. And it reads, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved um, upon the face of the waters. Three, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. Thank you, my sister. So, so far, it says, in the beginning, God. This word God is the word Elohim. For you, for you in your Hebrew t uh, studies, Elohim or as creator, almighty, and or strong as in definition. So, but it is a plural form, but it is also singular. It's, it's, it sounds a little confusing, but the context and the definition is a plural form, but it is a singular fashion as it is iterated here. Okay, so Elohim the identifying as God, but it was, you will see as we look at the other passages that there is an us going on here. And so as God spoke, right? So the thought came in God, which is God the Father. I don't want to use the Father yet as a name here, so don't confuse you. And then that thought went into word. That is the logos. And the word then by the operation of the spirit, the spirit then took that word and acted upon it. So we see then God, then we see the Logos with God and was God operating together and by the spirit of God making things happen. Go to the next verse, 26 to 27. We have, I know we have, we don't have much time, but I'm going to give you as best as I can. So bear with me. Definitely. Thank you, Pastor. Um, so 26 and 27, we're still in Genesis 1. It reads, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Thank you. So what do we see? God said what? Let us make man in our image. You catch that? So let us. So there is two things happening here. You got God and the Logos together, and it's identified as us. Let us make men in our image. Now watch the shift. Remember I told you it is a plural, plural word and as well as it is singular. So God created man, verse 27, in his own image. There is a singularity. So it is not plural gods. It is one God. Okay, and then this other passage in chapter 2, Genesis 2, verse 3. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. So here we see God operating even in the seventh day as the Sabbath also. God here again. Revealing himself to be the one that created the what? The seventh. the seventh day. Why is this important? Because when Jesus comes on the scene, he says what? I am the what? The Lord of the Sabbath. 
He could not be the Lord of the Sabbath unless he created, identified, and set it in motion and regulated it from the very beginning. But he was the Logos in the beginning. Let's continue. Verse, chapter 3, verse 22. Genesis still. Okay, and it reads, And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. And live forever. Mm. In this wonderful... So God, what? What's it saying again? Verse 22. Lord God. You see this? The Lord God. Bear with me a second. So here, this word Lord, I want you to remember this. Note it. Is the Strong's word, Hebrew word, with Adonai. the Strong's number, 3068. Yeah. yeah. This word Lord, mind you, is capitalized. Now, this yeah. is in the King James, all right? L O R D, capital letter. It is the word Yehovah. It is the word Yehovah. Okay? Remember that. The existing one. Okay? This is going to unpack soon. So, this is. Yahovah, so and the Lord or Yahovah, God, which is what? Here. Here, let's see in the Strong's Elohim. So Yahovah, Elohim, remember that word in the beginning, right? In the created. So Yahovah Elohim said, Behold, this, this man has become one of us. So we have Yahovah and all of Elohim is one together. He's become one of us. Same thing as it was in the beginning. Let us make man in our image. Let's continue. 35, Genesis 35, verse 11. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. Who's he talking to? The man. <laughs> huh? God Elohim, right? He said what? God Almighty. El, you ever heard the term El Shaddai, right? This is the word here, God Almighty. He's the one that says, be fruitful and multiply. Question, who said be fruitful and multiply earlier? In the beginning in Genesis, when he told thee, Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply. We are seeing that Jehovah... Elohim, now we hear El Shaddai, Almighty, is the one that created all things in the beginning. And now he's the one that's saying, be fruitful and multiply, tying it back into Genesis. God wants to reveal himself to us. Piece by piece, because he wants us beyond the shadow of doubt. To know who the father is and who his son is in truth. Who his son is in truth. Okay? So, any questions so far? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Sir. Brother Jeffrey again. So, um, I'm looking for like a, maybe a yes or no, not too much of explanation, but according to John 1, uh, 1, does Christ have a beginning? The Bible says no. Okay. So does does the word have a beginning? I'm sorry. No. Everlasting. Okay. 
So John John one one it says in the beginning was the word. So does the word have a beginning? Does God have the have a beginning when it says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth? Does God have a beginning? Jehovah does not have a beginning. So when he says in the beginning, it does not mean that it was about the logos or the word or God himself. It's for us to know. So when it sorry, just so I clarify. So so when it says in John 1, John 1, 1, it says, in the beginning was the word. So that word is in the, so the word has a beginning, yes or no? No, what, what I'm trying to tell you, he's pointing us back to Genesis. Okay. Beginning of creation. Beginning way in creation. He was not created. He's from everlasting. He has no yeah. beginning. Creation is the beginning. But yeah, okay, but it does say, it does say in the beginning was the word. Right, but it doesn't mean that he had a beginning. <laughs> okay. As you, as again, if you, as you continue, as we continue to study, you'll see the connection that I'm trying to make. Okay. And it will answer all your questions. Okay, uh, I just have one last one. Uh, sorry, not to take too much time. Um, so... So this word that you're saying doesn't have a beginning. So it is it is with God. Correct? Yes. Okay. So does so the Yehovah, like you said, Jehovah, right? Jehovah? Yes. He is, he pre exists the beginning, right? He has no beginning. He's from yeah, everlasting. He He's, yeah, he pre-exists like before anything that was. Right, so he was never created, right? So he has okay, no so beginning. He was, so he was never created, but was Christ created? No. No? Okay. okay. Absolutely that's, that's all not. No. Okay. 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 All right. So thank you for your question. So let us continue to build on this, and let's see if it helps get more clarification. Matthew 12, 8. Pastor Query, I do not think I'm going to be able to finish the study tonight. Hi. Okay. Just you just have to just stop where you stop, Pastor Hash, and we take it next week. Okay. As the Lord leads. Amen. See, we see that we have to be able to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. So I appreciate yes. that. Yes. And how God wants to lead, because this is such a crucial it is. subject matter. That you can build your house on hay, straw, and stubble. We must know what we are building on, help others to also build on this solid foundation. Hallelujah. In Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So thank you. So Matthew 12, 8. Let us go there. There's a, there's a question in the chat, Pastor Hash. Okay. Before you go. It said, um, man has become like one of us. Is the us god and the logos word which is jesus yes but don't we don't want to use jesus term yet but yes to answer that question it is god and the word together which is the logos okay thank you thank you you're welcome thank you for your question go to matthew now 12.8. Oh, this, I think I mentioned it already, but go ahead and read it so, it so everybody knows the reference. Is there a reader? Yeah, you show you faster. Sorry? That's okay. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. Good. So that connects us still back to Genesis. Who is Lord of the Sabbath? God. God was Lord of the Sabbath. Now Jesus is saying the Son of Man is what? Is Lord even of the Sabbath. And we'll see why he continues to say that. Uh, John 17, 5. Let's go to that passage. And now, O oh Father, glorify thou me 
with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Oh, Jesus is speaking now to the Father. And he's saying what? Glorify me? I think we touched on this glory earlier. Glorify me with who? Thine own self. With thy own self. How? With the? Glory. Which I had what? With thee before the world was. Before the world was. So he couldn't have been created. So he, because he was not part of the world. You understand? He's outside of that creation. He was before the world was created. You follow this? With the glory of the Father. So what, this, what glory form was he in? The Logos. That is the form that he was in with the Father. As the Word. Okay? So let's continue. John 8. John 8, and I'm going to read verse 23 and 24. He said unto them, You are from beneath. I am from above. I am from where? Above. Ye are of this world. I am not of this world. So he is not of this world. Period. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am what? I am he, ye shall die in your sins. He who? I had to ask, I said, he who? Well, let's continue. For if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. Go to verse 47 with me. Same chapter. He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not because you are not of God. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and has a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father. Beloved, I pray to God that we all honor the father. And you do dishonor me. And I seek not my own glory. There is one that seeketh and judges. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead and the prophets. And thou sayest, if a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham? which is dead, and the prophets are dead. Whom makest thou thyself? Pay attention. There's a question that is posed. Who are you declaring to be? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet you have not known him. But I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his saying. Your father, Abraham, rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet 50 years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Then took they up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. What is Jesus saying? The question is posed. Who are you? Who are you declaring yourself to be? 
He's saying, you have no clue who my father is. You have no clue who I am. Because if you don't know the father, how can you know me? You are not the children of God, etc. And he declares, he said, before Abraham was, I am. What is he saying? Who is I am? He is saying he had no beginning and he had no end. Hallelujah. That's right, my brother. No yes. beginning, no end. Let's see who is this I am. Exodus 3, 13. Let's go. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, what is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. And verse 15, please. Sorry, I didn't have that in my notes, but go ahead. And God, and God said, moreover unto Moses, Thou shalt thou thus. say, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob hath sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God. He's saying, Moses is saying, who should I say sent me? And what did God say? God said, you tell him I am sent you. I am that I am the self-existing one. Tell him I am the God of who I am the Lord. Remember we said Lord, Lord God. I am Jehovah, God, Elohim. I am Jehovah, Elohim, the Lord of Abraham. Before Abraham was, I am. What is Jesus saying to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and many unbelievers? He is God. He is Jehovah. He is God that was there in the beginning. He is the I am that Moses met. Beloved, you may still not believe me, but I'm going to unpack it to you from one side of the other. He is saying, I am from the beginning. Pastor Hatch, there's a question in the chat when you two. Okay, let me see. Yeah, it said, can you please explain Revelation 3 verse 14? Not right now. I, I would love to, but not at this point. Okay. okay, so can we table that and then we can come back to it when it's time? Because I okay. want to continue to keep this thought very carefully here. Okay, if you don't mind. Okay. So I appreciate the question, Brother Jeffrey, but let us keep it in time. Okay? So, so far, please know Jesus is telling the Pharisees, before Abraham was, I am. You know why I know that he's declaring himself God in that passage of John? Because what did they try to do after he said that? In verse 59 of John 8, they took up stones to cast at him. Why? Because he was declaring something that in their eyes was blasphemous. They knew that he was declaring himself to be Jehovah, the God of the Old Testament. And they couldn't accept it. They rejected it. I am. That's why they tried to stone him. Genesis 17, 1. 
And when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. Ooh, we're getting deeper. Are you swimming or are you sinking? Genesis 17, one, he's declaring what? He's talking to Abraham. Abraham desired to see my day and he saw it. He's talking to Abraham, said to him, I am who? I am the Almighty God. The what? Almighty, Say it again. The, the Almighty God. Almighty. Now that word Almighty should ring a bell in your ears. We're not going to go there yet. But make a notation. Highlight that. The Almighty God walk before me. You see why the father said about the son, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And chapter 35, verse 11 in Genesis, continuing. And God We have said, the Almighty here. Go ahead, sorry. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. That is the same passage to complement this as well. God reiterating the Logos, Jehovah, reiterating himself, the almighty God. To who? To Jacob. To Jacob. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, now he's revealing himself to Jacob. Continuing, Psalm 83, 18. That what does men, the psalm have to say? That men may know that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the most high over all the earth. Oh, boy. Psalm 83, yes. That men may know whose name alone is Jehovah. You are the most high over all the earth. The most high. You're following me. Following the thread. Jehovah. The most high. You sure we know Jesus? Who this Jesus is? Blessed be the name of the Lord. I get excited. Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42. Now follow this very, very carefully. Isaiah 42, beginning with verse 5. Thus saith God, the who? The Lord. Jehovah. He that what? Created the heavens. Look at that. It's coming together. God. Jehovah. He that created the heaven and stretched them out. He that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it. He that giveth breath unto the people upon it and spirit to them that walk therein. I, the Lord, the Lord Jehovah, have called thee in righteousness and will, will hold thy hand. I will keep thee and, gi and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles to open the what? The blind eyes to bring out to the prisoners from the prison and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord that is my name and my glory, my glory, my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Who is this? Jehovah, who is this? Who created the heavens and stretched them out? Who created the earth? He's saying, I, the Lord, did that. I, God, the Lord, did that. Elohim, Jehovah, did that. 
chapter 45, Isaiah. Let's keep looking. Isaiah 45, verse 11. Thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and his maker, ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. I have made the earth and created man upon it. I, even my hands, have stretched out the heavens and all their hosts have I commanded. Who is this? The maker. Who? The Lord. The Holy One of Israel. It's coming together. The creator. Exodus 6, 1 to 3. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. And I am, and I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them? Ah, oh, it was hidden. It's hidden. It was hidden. I am Jehovah. He brings it together. I appear to Abraham. Jesus said before Abraham was, I am. Mm -hmm. You understand? That's why he was able to appear to Abraham because he was before Abraham. And I show, he revealed himself to Isaac, to Jacob. By what name? The name of God Almighty. But then he had to unpack what this name is. And he said, but by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. In this rich, in this wonderful, blessed be the name of God Almighty. Yeah. Name above all names. So, so, uh, John, Pastor Hush. Yes. I, I see the, I see what happened here with the, the, with, with the children of Israel. Um, in that, as he speak to them, um, to to they were they were not convinced that he is, and so maybe that's what is happening today as well. That some person just don't believe that he is. My beloved pastor and brother, you are absolutely right. Do you know when I shared this teaching how much flack? comes i'm telling you because satan doesn't care about good morality you can have all the good morality you want satan cares about the name of jesus he wants nobody to know who he is and god is sharing with us treasure because at the name of jesus everything bows yeah. and that's what god wants us to know who are we dealing with? And when you are saying, in the name of Jesus, leave. Or I, I ask this in Jesus' name. You are calling Almighty to come down. Jehovah to come down. This is serious business. Hallelujah. I'm stirred up inside. I'm telling you. You gotta get stirred. You gotta know what you're saying when you're praying. You can't be so loose with Jesus' name. God had hid it, and then he started to unpack it to the children of Israel so that they would find it precious and valuable. You know how sometimes a couple they have the you know they they become pregnant and, and there's the baby, and you ask them what's the name of the baby, and they say, Well, I don't want to tell you. It's a secret. And you're so excited, you, and, and then they come close, and they still don't want to tell you. Until the child is born, God wanted to birth Jesus into the world 
to reveal his identity so we would appreciate that when he died for us, we'd know what really happened. We'd say, blessed be God, the creator who has come down and died for me. Now we understand the gravity. See, I'm jumping ahead. I'm jumping ahead, my brother, my sisters. But I see time has come. I, ha I, I have to stop. I, I want to honor uh, the, the requests that have been laid. And so please note exactly where we stop because sometimes I forget. But in this subject, I will not forget. Exodus 6, 1 to 3 is where we stop. There's so much more. And a lot of you that have questions, I respect your questions. Note them. And by the end of the study, if you still have those questions, more than happy to discuss them. But right now, I want you to soak this in. I want you to absorb what has taken place so far. Because I tell you, the, Jew, the Jews, the Pharisees said they couldn't grasp it. Who is this man walking among us? Some carpenter? They didn't know who was walking among them. Do we know who's walking amongst us? With us? Jesus. Jesus. All right. I'm turning it over, Pastor, to you and to the moderator, Sister Sandra. So I bless God. To God be the glory. Thank you, Pastor. Lord, praise the Lord. Ash, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I, 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 I'm, I'm sitting here, Pastor Ash, but um, my mind is is really deep. My thought, Amen. God be praised. God be praised. Who do we worship? And when we say Jesus, what do we mean? How do we see him? What is our understanding of him? Amen. I believe this is powerful as we even prepare ourselves to celebrate his death, burial, and resurrection. God bless you, Pastor Ash. And I know that there are a lot of you know questions that will be coming um, as soon as you close this chapter. Well, we give God thanks for the inspiration and the understanding through the Holy Spirit as you impart the truth of God words to us this evening. To God be the glory. And so we're going to close off until next week. And we hope and trust that you will be back for the continuation of this powerful teaching on the extending identity of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah to his name. Praise God. Praise his holy name. I see Sister Joyce. Is that Mother Joyce? I'm going to ask you, please. To open your mic and do the closing prayer for us at this time, please, and thank you. Praise the Lord. 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 Praise Amen. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah, Lord. How we thank you for your words tonight. Ooh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Your powerful words, your word that tell us who you are and the power that goes with who you are. Hallelujah. If only we could understand that power, Amen. oh, glory be to God, we would move mountains 
like you said that we could. Jesus, how I thank you tonight. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus to give you thanks for this platform tonight. And I pray, Father, that every person that was on this platform tonight will be blessed or was blessed and will continue to be blessed with these words. I pray, God, that we would hide these words in our heart and that we would ponder them and that we would soak them in us. Let us soak in them and take them in Jesus. and continue to understand the meaning of what this is all about. Thank you, Father, for your son, Jesus. Thank you for the, your servant, Pastor Ash, that you sent to bring the word so clearly, so clearly in your word to us. Oh, glory be to God. Help us that what we don't understand, that we would go back in our spare times and go back. Hey, Lord. And go back and go back because the word is there and ask the Holy Spirit to help us to understand what we don't understand. Bless everyone tonight. Bless everyone tonight that listen. Father, and pray. may your words bring comfort and joy and peace and love to their heart tonight. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray. And Father, whatever I fail of asking of you, Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Fail not to grant it unto us tonight in the mighty name of the Lord. Jesus. This, this miss us with your richest blessing, with your peace, with joy, with contentment in your name, Jesus, because that's what you came for us to have. Love, joy, peace, contentment. Grant us these things, these gifts. Grant them to us tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Mother Joyce. Really deep meditation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I believe that we will, you know, walking away from this platform as new convert as we stepped in the power and the spirit of God. I'm going to invite Pastor Marshall to do the honor and then Sister Quarry will come with the Vote of thanks and announcement. Praise the Lord, brethren. And there is a voice from, from God saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And now unto him that is able to keep us from falling, and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory, with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Father, majestic dominion and power, but no one forevermore. Let the saints of the living God shout, Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Praise, Praise God! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! 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 Praise, Praise God! God.